Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here. It is January 24th, Zer has arrived. He is on Titan. We are over here on the rig, just in case you don't know where I'm at. And we're gonna go check out his little side office over here, see what exotics he has today. Maybe he's got something new, maybe he's got some old crap. We will have to find out shortly. Nice thing is it's a very short walk. Gonna come down here, we're gonna drop into his little office complex. Going through the door, he is sitting here nice and alone. Let's see what he's got. Ooh, we got a new one. So, quick reminder, your exotic engram is again going to work on a checklist until you have everything for that character class. Then you, when you have all exotic weapons that you can get from Xur and armor, it's going to start doing random rolls on armor, giving you a chance at least a good stat roll. So if you got a good amount of shards, you probably don't have 10k, but if you play a decent amount you got some shards, try and get a decent stat roll because the ones that come from him are collections, so they're very low stats. So good stats are going to at least have a chance to roll from here once a week. You may as well give it a shot. All right, let's get into the gear. So we've got a new one at Xur. This was uh, the se one of the seasonal weapons last season, actually, and it's Monte Carlos. So this is an auto rifle. Your exotic perk here is Monte Carlo Method. Dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance to fully charge your melee ability on each kill. Pretty sweet, actually, especially if you have a lot of melees to get. Markov Chain. This weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with this weapon. Melee kills grant ammo for this weapon. So I know there's a lot of things going on in that sentence. Basically, the more melee kills and kills you get with that weapon, you get increased damage. And if you do get a melee kill, you can reload it. And on top of that, all the damage that you do is going to, like, basically give you a percentage towards your melee cooldown getting recharged faster. And when you get a full kill, um, you have a chance to completely reload the thing. So this, if you use your melee a lot, and melees also include things like smoke grenades, stuff like that, whatever your melee is going to be is going to have a chance to get used frequently. So if that fits in your playstyle at all, and if you don't have this thing because you may have just missed it last season on Bad Luck, this is the first time you can buy it, so you absolutely are going to want to get this thing for sure. It's a pretty sweet looking gun, actually, so if you enjoy it, it's got some nice ornate etchings on it and stuff of that nature. In the world of auto rifles, it's actually pretty good. So, pick it up if you don't have it. You're definitely going to want to have this thing in your collections. Experiment. Enjoy your melees. I kind of like how it's got the... Uh, can't, I'm blanking on the damn name. The little blade on the front. Somebody in the comments below tell me what that thing is because my mind just blanked. But, you guys know what I'm talking about. If it comes back to me, I'll say it before the end. So for the Hunters, we've got the Orpheus Rigs. Your exotic perk here is going to be Uncanny Arrows. Provides ability energy for each enemy tethered by Deadfall Anchors. Mobius Quiver has more shots. So when you tether enemies, what this is going to do is actually help you recharge your super the more enemies you tether. Put it in a big group of enemies, tethers a whole bunch of them, especially with the one that goes wider and more. You're going to get a good chunk, maybe even up to like half or more of your super. There was a point this was almost kind of broken to where you could get like your full super back pretty easily. It's harder to do that now, but it is still definitely a good thing if you're running tether, helping out your raid group, trying to get your tether back as frequently as possible. It is still very, very useful in those instances. Now we are running with an arc affinity here, so you're going to have weapon options of bows, machine guns, pulse rifles, shotguns, and swords for both scavengers and dexterity mods. But we are running arc on these boots, that's what we've got. But again, if you are a hunter at all and you don't have these, you want to buy these because if you're using tether, especially in PvE settings, you may as well run it with this thing. It's one of the best ways to go. For the Titans, we've got the Actium War Rig. Always cool, just showing all the shells on there. There's some pretty cool ornaments for it as well. So your perk is Auto Loading Link. Steadily reloads a portion of your equipped auto rifles or machine guns magazine from your reserves. So as you're going through things like 21% Delirium, uh, Monte Carlo, which we just got done talking about, and any auto or machine gun, the longer you're like literally shooting it, you're still going to be able to fire a little bit longer. It's going to kind of give you kind of a partial auto reload while using it to, get to continue to fire it for just that little bit longer. So if you have perks that go into getting multi-kills or anything of that nature and you need those extra few bullets, this is actually going to help you be able to fire that thing longer without reloading. It actually works pretty well. So, if you do like auto rifles and you're playing a Titan, or machine guns, by the way, works on both, this is definitely one to consider. Now, when it comes to your affinity, we're running with Arc again. So, you're going to be working with machine gun reserves, which is a nice perk to it. Auto rifles is on a different category. But at least you got machine guns, and the reserves there is probably going to serve you a bit more, since heavy is going to be a big benefit. 
Still got bows, pulses, shotguns, and swords. And they've also got unflinching aim with machine guns as well. So if you're running machine guns, you want to fire them a bit longer. Toy around with this one, see how it is. Again, as always, add all these exotics to your collection if you don't have them. I know the stat roll on these from Xur is pretty basic. But it is still good to complete that collection so you can start working towards some better stat rolls later on. Finally, for the Warlock, we've got Verity's Brow. Now, this one is going to say the fourth magic. Energy weapon kills boost grenade recharge rate for you and nearby allies. So if you have an energy weapon that you like using a lot, maybe you're running around with Luna's Howl, or maybe you're doing other things, and you want your grenade to be up more frequently, there are probably other exotics that are going to work better. But if you like this specific of, like, I use my energy weapon all the time, and also my grenade recharge rate is something I'm kind of built around, it's only going to benefit you just between those two specifically like now if i'm running like i'm using my kinetic go figure pulse rifle and i'm running a melee build this one's not going to serve you that much so it does have a specific kind of build that you're going to want to work this thing into but if you put it in there and you're getting work done with that energy weapon your grenades are going to come up more frequently as a warlock you might have that handout supernova or whatever it is you're going for to be able to use as much as possible so consider that one can be quite a bit of fun and handheld supernova could be wrong but there's different grenade options for the warlocks you can use we do have a solar affinity on this helm, so we're going to be dealing with ammo finders for auto rifles, fusion rifles, linear fusions, rockets, and some machine guns. And then also the same weapons get the chances at targeting perks as well. That pretty much wraps up Tentacle Face for the day. So this is again January 24th. If you guys missed the lad word, last word of the podcast this morning, we actually had two guests on there that were um, just in one of the kind of major core peak kind of teams. For the Corridors of Time puzzle, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go check my other Corridors of Time puzzle videos talking about the emblems and the lore that is going away on Tuesday. So again, if you have not explored the Corridors of Time and you want the emblem that comes from there or the lore pages, there's 19 of them, you need to go into the Corridors of Time this weekend because on the 28th, when Weekly Reset happens, it's going to be gone from the game and we will not be able to go back. So definitely make sure you're working on that. Also, if you're working on your... Uh, Bastion quest and you're having issues getting it from Saint-14 make sure you go to Osiris and p complete all the quest options that he has for you um, You don't have to do the full 30 quest option But you do need to go through and make sure that you do all the quests to save Saint-14 that you can and then you should have that thing available over at Saint-14 But thank you guys very much for watching the video today. You guys are rock stars um, Thank you for the support on the channel. You guys can follow me on Twitch on Twitter Right here on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Comment below if you have questions, thoughts, or can tell me what the damn thing on the front of that gun is. Thank you guys very much. Have an awesome weekend. And honestly, just keep kicking butt in Destiny and out here in the community. Everybody's awesome. You guys rule. And I'll see you soon.